Alpine hiking and basic mountaineering. A series of lessons on the fundamentals of mountain travel. Our instructor for the course is Dick McGowan, young veteran of many major expeditions to the world's most challenging peaks, including the 1955 Fla Everett Lhotse expedition in the Himalayas, the successful ascent of 25,600 foot K1 or Mashabram in the Karakoram Range. Now to get us started on our first lesson, here is Dick McGowan. The mountain areas of our state provide many opportunities for various types of recreation in the mountains. Uh, hiking, camping, all these activities are extremely enjoyable with a little bit of education, a little bit of know-how in the field. Uh, for example, you yourself might have been up in the hills and done a little uh, hiking. Perhaps it was a trip to the Paradise Ice Caves up on Mount Rainier. Enjoyable couple hour walk. Or again, uh, perhaps you've been out uh, sliding with the kids or with the scout troop up in some of our uh, path areas during the spring and summer when the snows are still on the ground. Or hiking with the scouts or other groups that go out in the mountains to enjoy the beautiful mountain recreation region. There's nothing like a hike through the mountain valleys in the summertime with the alpine flowers coming out, the snow retreating from the gullies and the ridges and the crisp uh, air that you get during the summer months. Or camping in the high alpine valleys surrounded by wonderful little alpine trees and trickling brooks where you can get up and play in the snow or perhaps uh, fish in some of the wonderful mountain streams. Catch a few mountain trout. Even if the fishing isn't good, uh, I'm certain the scenery will be. Again, uh, many of the more hardy ones uh, like to get up and do a little climbing. We have peaks in our Cascades and Olympics all the way from extremely difficult uh, to very easy. Or perhaps it's snow climbing, another enjoyable uh, type of climbing. Uh, perhaps most of our climbers here in the Northwest are really snow climbers because most of our peaks uh, have quite a bit of snow on them. Well, any of these activities, whether it's hiking, camping, or fishing, or even mountaineering, require to enjoy them to the fullest a certain amount of education. As if we can educate ourselves, learn a little more about the mountains, or we can go into the mountains and feel a little safer. You know, there are many areas of our state that you, you just can't get into uh, by car or even by horse in many cases. You have to get out and kind of hike back on in. Maybe it's only a day or perhaps a weekend, or maybe you can get the family or the scout troop back there for a week. But many areas of our state haven't been visited very much at all. I'm sure many of you have been up to Mount Rainier in Mount Rainier National Park, have climbed around on some of the wonderful trails there, have climbed perhaps a few little peaks around. Uh, it's just Pinnacle Peak here in the picture. More to the north, uh, an area which has not been visited too much uh, is up above Lake Chelan in the uh, Swiss Valley, up around uh, the peak of Silver Star and Cascade Pass. This area all through here is uh, the heart of America's wilderness area. It's the true Alps of America. These areas like this are only a few hours from the cars in many cases to get up these high alpine valleys. Mount Silver Star over in the above Lake Chelan is another area where only a few mountaineers have gotten into in recent years. An area where uh, roads only go within a uh, distance of 10 or, 10 or 12 miles but in a few days, you can get back and enjoy this wonderful area. An area that more people are probably familiar with is over around Mount Baker. Because there is a road going up to Mount Baker, uh, you can drive all around it. In fact, I'm sure uh, if you've been up there on a clear day, you probably thought uh, what an easy trip it would be just to get out of your car and wander up through the meadows and the trees and get up on the glacier and head to the summit. And yet it uh, rises five or 6,000 feet above you over steep glaciers, crevasse glaciers, and it can be very dangerous if you uh, don't have the equipment and the technical know-how to climb something like this. Another area in the state that's been attracting a lot of attention in recent years is over in the Olympic Peninsula, the Olympic Range, probably one of the hiking meccas of America. 
There are hundreds of miles of trail throughout the Olympics, wonderful condition, and many enjoyable climbs that uh, don't require a great deal of technical knowledge beyond that of basic uh, fundamentals of mountaineering. Mount Olympus is one of the most enjoyable of these peaks, only 8,000 feet or a little less, but lying along the coast like it does, it has a tremendous amount of snowfall and very large glaciers on all sides. It's a nice climb, it can be done in three days. Uh, again, like many of these areas, uh, you should have some knowledge and equipment and know-how to get back here and fully enjoy these. But if you're going to fully enjoy it, you should really uh, uh, get into and study it and learn a little bit about it. You know, just like uh, you can pick up a book and read a little bit about uh, climbing, uh, for example, sitting on a snowfield and sliding down, it seems very easy. The uh, uh, film uh, on skiing is the similar to this. Uh, it looks very easy to be able to uh, ski down a slope. Uh, many of you have been to the passes or have done a little bit of skiing, but again, the uh, uh, sport of skiing is something that requires a lot of skiing uh, ability. A mountain travel can be uh, quite a dangerous sport too, as you could imagine, but through uh, a little technical know-how and ability and getting out and getting a little training, getting with a group that knows something about mountaineering, you can probably appreciate it a little more. The mountains, uh, uh, mountain travel can be quite dangerous. Uh, each year there is published here in the United States a report on accidents in our mountain recreation regions. It's published by the American Alpine Club, which is one of the main mountaineering clubs in the country. I'd like to read for just a moment and then take you on a uh, kind of a view of something that happened a few years ago. We have, uh, of course, a number of uh, accidents every year throughout the United States. Uh, some of them are simply from uh, lack of understanding. There are very few real true accidents. Most of them can be prevented. Uh, the one that I picked out that, uh, to share with you a few moments is the one on uh, a group of fishermen going back to do some fishing in a high alpine lake in the Northern Cascades. Uh, if you'll follow through uh, the little story with me, as reported in the accident reports on American mountaineering. About noon on August 1st, uh, three fishermen headed for a string of lakes in Necklace Valley on the north side of the Lawn Gap. Two companions headed in the opposite direction, and all were to meet at or near the Gap, where they'd do a little fishing later on. Well, the snow ascent to the Gap from the south side was not steep, and they didn't have any trouble. They got right up there. But the first 500 yards of the descent on the north side, this lake they were going down into, uh, got a little, uh, a little steeper, particularly the top 600 feet or so. And the, the large rock uh, was protruding on this snow slope, and one of the boys went on down and didn't have too much trouble. He uh, slipped and slid a little bit, but the other boy had on smooth-soled boots. And as he started on down, uh, the other fellow kind of looked up at him, and he saw him, and he started to yell to him, and just as he did, uh, he slipped. And away he came, shooting down the slope for quite some distance. In fact, he went about 150 feet and hit a, a small rock outcropping and bounced a little bit and went on about 150 feet more. And finally, uh, he ended up in a kind of a hump down uh, near some rocks there, and uh, fortunately, he was not, uh, not killed, but he was uh, rather shaken and bruised, to say the least. Well, a fall like this, uh, it goes on to point out uh, that when the rescuers came up here, it was so steep that they themselves had a great deal of trouble uh, getting up to the same place, and here they had equipment and gear and ropes and everything. Well, fortunately, there was a group nearby, a scout group camping nearby, and they heard these calls up on the slope, and they came up and rendered first aid and got the party uh, kind of back on its feet again, but it was obvious that this man was going to need uh, a rescue team to come on in and help them out. So one of the fellows in the scout troop ran on out about 11 miles and phoned the Seattle Mountain Rescue Council, and this was about 6.30 in the evening. See, the accident had happened about noon. And that, later that night, they came on in. They couldn't get a helicopter in because of the darkness, so a ground party started on in. But they didn't get to the accident scene until 6.30 the next morning. This is 
for overnight this party had stayed up there. Well, fortunately, uh, the weather was not too cold and they managed to survive the evening okay. And during the next day, they brought the victim on down, back out, and finally a uh, radio contact was established with a Coast Guard helicopter and a 15-man uh, rescue team didn't have to go all the way in to bring him on out. And the man was brought on back uh, safely and he recovered okay. You see an accident like this uh, off the uh, trail like they were, just a couple of fishermen going out to have a good time for a few days, but they didn't realize that on a steep slope like this, it can be quite dangerous. I mean, it doesn't look that way. When you get out there and your foot slips a little bit and away you go, and you don't know what's below you and you hit some rocks, it can be rather serious. Well, a rescue like this involves many people. There is the uh, various agencies of the government that are ready to help, but the main uh, say of mountain rescue in the Pacific Northwest is the Mountain Rescue Council. There are a number of these groups around that uh, participate in various rescues throughout the United States. We have several groups here in the Northwest. Here you see a climber being brought out. Uh, fortunately, he's uh, not badly hurt, but look how many men it takes and how much equipment to go back in here and help out on something like this. Unfortunately, there are uh, hundreds of mountaineers and hikers and climbers uh, around the Northwest that are willing to go out and do this. And then he's sped away by helicopter by many of the various agencies that help mountain rescue in the various uh, mountain rescues that we have each year. Or if we're going to, as we say again, fully enjoy mountaineering as a sport, uh, then uh, we must uh, uh, get a little knowledge and how to uh, take care of ourselves. Because uh, through training, it comes enjoyment of our hills. It can be, uh, seem like drudgery at first, uh, but as you get to know more about it, it uh, becomes a little more enjoyable. And it can be safe. And it can open up to you uh, an entirely new and thrilling uh, activity. Because many of us have never spent too much time in the mountains. Uh, we don't know too much about it, perhaps, but uh, we can gain a little knowledge because we live in an area which is very mountainous, uh, which has a wonderful, uh, get, provides a wonderful opportunity to get out and climb. You know, you can take up this sport at almost any level you want. It may be just an easy hike, it may be in climbing, it may be just fishing, it may be just camping up in the alpine areas. And I'm sure that uh, one of these uh, areas you'd enjoy. You know, when I started myself in climbing as a, in high school, uh, I never knew that uh, one day I would become more involved in mountaineering that eventually I'd even get up on an expedition. Because it's always kind of the dream of the mountaineer to participate in a true uh, big expedition. And one of the first I was on was up in Alaska to climb uh, King Peak in the Yukon Territory with a group of Seattle people. A wonderful climb of this peak, a little over 17,000 feet in elevation. And another uh, peak that I climbed a few years later as K1 in the Karakoram Range, a little over 25,000 feet, a uh, beautiful peak, one of the highest peaks in the world. Uh, here on these expeditions, of course, you can uh, share uh, the comradeship of conquering and doing something that is really unusual. And uh, in 1955, I was a member of the International Himalayan Expedition, which attempted Mount Everest and Lhotse on the Nepalese-Tibetan border. And uh, also in 1963, uh, we hope to go back and climb this peak. 